right, what I'd like to do is uh, uh, the Senate piece of the course will be studying the uh, ins and outs of the Riemann integral, the Bay integral, and the Henstock Kurzweil integral. And this is really advanced stuff for us. I mean, it, there aren't too many uh, master's level courses that have to do with the Henstock Kurzweil integral. I can tell you that. And uh, sometimes that's called the generalized Riemann integral. And the whole idea of the game the reason there's so many definitions of integral is people are trying to get an ever more uh, encompassing definition to integrate more and more functions to make the fundamental theorem of calculus. You know, the ultimate fundamental theorem of calculus would be uh, if, if a function has a derivative, you can, you can take that derivative and integrate it and always recover the function. And some functions have funky derivatives that don't exist here and there, or even, even infinite sets, they don't exist. And uh, you can still, under some circumstances, recover the function. So it's a game sort of at the fringes. The basic integral that we use in science and engineering uh, is good. It's good enough. It's the Riemann, mostly because the functions of nature tend to be continuous. And if they're discontinuous, they're not bad for discontinuous. So you have to have sort of a, an evil pathological mind to dream up a function that the Riemann integral can handle. And then after you do that, you can usually integrate it in the Lebesgue sense. And if you can't do that, you can usually integrate it in the Henstock Kurzweil sense. And if you can't do that, well, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't want to do too much today. Uh, I wanted to go through the You don't see it. Let's see. I made some notes to myself here. Or on the DC. Oh, yeah. I, I went to the trouble of uh, going through in detail this argument. Have, has anybody read the book? I don't uh, look at it. Could you try to read as much of chapter one or Thursday as possible? It's an overview. Uh, and there's some technical points in there. One of them I can't figure out, so I'll probably uh, ask for your assistance there. It's uh, Leibniz's uh, integration of the. Uh, Arctangent or whatever there, I, uh, there's a drawing, and I, I don't want to know whether the drawing is mislabeled or I'm not seeing something, but I'll be damned if I can figure it out. What page is that? Oh, uh, that's, uh, that drawing is on page 9. Not a good sign. I don't understand. <laughs> this is a mathematical novel, so to speak. The other one was an organized course. This is just a review of the major definitions of integral as they have come about in history. And the first one is, uh, is the Greek conception of integration. Uh, I wanted to go through efforts of very smart Greek people whose names you probably recall, Hippocrates. I had, a, I had a friend in the ninth grade that embarrassed himself to no end by we had a report or something in science class on Hippocrates, and he started his his talk on Hippocrates. <laughs> Still remember. Anyway, apparently Hippocrates was an Athenian merchant, and the problem of the day was this. Oh my God, that coffee must not have any caffeine. No, 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 that's pretty good circle. So here's a diameter of the circle. And uh, let's see, I'm going to take the point down here. And uh, draw that. So this is a square that's built on this radius, which I'm going to call R, S, M, R, small. Now, if I take a radius, look, I have to make this piece of I, uh, 
I have this now as a radius. I'm going to call that R large. R big, that's my And sweep out an arc. From there to there. A radius uh, R big. The area I want to calculate is the area of this moon shape thing. And I don't imagine this is Greek. It sounds more Latin to me. Moon is that is that uh, shape there. So this is a very, very early attempt to do quadrature. Quadrature is finding areas. Finding areas of figures bounded by straight lines is, is fairly trivial once you know the formula for a triangle. But bear in mind the, the Greeks were wrestling with figures that had uh, curved sides. So only special cases allowed their areas to be determined. And that was the problem. You had to have a special case. The world was nothing but special cases. And the search for a general method of handling quadrature uh, led them ultimately to calculus uh, 2,000 years after this. This is 430 BC. So it took till 6. 1684 or so for this method to really be perfected. Up to that point, it was all special cases. Many very clever, especially Archimedes, determination of the area of parabolics in the Hippocrates. Hippocrates method here. Uh, that next time I'll talk about. You'll say. I'll say. Hypocrite. No, don't say that. <laughs> okay. So, how do you do this? Well, let me see if I can step through what work is. Now, and of course, this thing's uh, 2,400 years old. So, that's the area we want. I, I wasn't too heavy on the shading there, just a few dots to show you what Because I want to make the following construction. I continue this line in principle to that point, and Connect the dots here. Okay, now that this this figure here should be a square, right? Okay. Now there is an assumption that Hippocrates makes, which we will verify in a moment. That's Eudoxian uh, integral that uh, basically, if you have similar figures, their areas are in the same proportion as the squares of their corresponding linear dimensions. And, you know, by extension, the, the volumes of three-dimensional figures, if they're similar, are in the ratio of the cubes of their uh, similar or characteristic dimension. And, and we know this and accept that certain two of them today. It's obvious for something like a cube, but it's not so obvious for a, like a sphere. Okay, so uh, what he does, what he does, let's see, I'm going to, I'm going to call the area of this smaller loon, it's a loon, right? A loon is, uh, well, I guess this is a loon. You know what this is called? The, the thing that this, the crescent-shaped thing, is a loon. If the one side is degenerate, it's a sigma. If you have a piece of pi, that's a sigma. So that's the vocabulary. Okay. So that's A1 and by symmetry A1 prime. Those areas, 